Hello, and welcome to the La Jolla Cosmetic Podcast. I'm your hostess, Monique Ramsey. So Phoebe Davis is one of our patients. She starred in a reality show called Cosmic Love on Amazon Prime. And if you missed her earlier takeover episode on our podcast, please go back and check it out. Um, and we'll put a link in the show notes for that. So that episode was so good. You really have to listen. So we, we said we've got to have her do another takeover. And so this is a special part two of our series with her surgery team, which was Dr. Hector Salazar and his nurse, Carmen. So welcome, Phoebe, back to the podcast, and thanks for taking over. Hello. I'm so excited to be here with <laughs> Carmen. Carmen is the most amazing, wonderful nurse who was part of my surgery team. Um, and I'm so excited that you're here and we get to chat today. Thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to this. A little nervous, but I do look forward to this. Oh, shake it off, sister. It's going to be good. <laughs> so it's been a little bit over two months since my breast augmentation. And the reason I've taken over the podcast to talk with you, Carmen, and to talk to Dr. Salazar is to share some of the most important things that I learned throughout this process so that we can help others who are also thinking about getting breast implants. There is someone who is as important as a surgeon, if not more important, and that is a nurse. That's you. Yeah, thank and you. And I am just so grateful and appreciative of the relationship that we built together. Um, and so, yeah, that's why I just want, I want you to be on the podcast with me today. Hi, and I'm very flattered and honored. Thank you. Do you remember the first time we met? Yes, it was a <laughs> consultation. Uh -huh. um, I cheated a little bit. I did see it was in September, but uh, we saw, we met, and we had a nice conversation and a nice consultation. And I believe you came back about a month later just to kind of reconfirm things and resize, you know. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, that was the last time we met. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when I had the very first um, like implant sizers with, with that like surgery bra. Yes, and I did. I, yeah. And something that, that you told me to do for the, my second consultation was to bring in like my own bra and my own like crop top, something that I would normally wear. <laughs> that advice was so helpful for me. Um, mm -hmm. because I couldn't picture myself wearing, uh, you know, like the V-neck shirt and having yes. that type of bra on. So that was really, really good advice. Um, yes. How long it, have you been helping patients? Well, I don't want to date myself, but I graduated nursing school in, in uh, 1980. But what got me into nursing was, um, you know, there was a, my sister, I think at the age of 13, had developed some bone cancer. And I would go and visit her in the hospital. She was in the hospital probably for a couple of years. And I would go visit her in the hospital. And I loved what the nurses did. I was only 15 back then. And I said, you know what? This is what I want to do. I want to mm -hmm. help people. So that's pretty much what got me into nursing. Yeah. So yes, being a nurse is your job. But what, what are the other components to that? Like, what is your job really? Well, I've subsequently, obviously, of the nursing, I've you know, uh, became coming into the plastic surgery field, it's different. It's, it's, it's basically, um, fun, rewarding, because I don't just take care of people that are sick. I take people that are just having life changing events and procedures. So I help them and guide them through this event and it's fun. Mm -hmm. I like what I do. It's well, you're amazing okay. at it. <laughs> Um, I was I was telling Dr. Salazar in the podcast that I did with him something that was so meaningful to me. It just meant a lot was how great you were with checking up on me post post op and just calling me and leaving me voicemails saying you can always reach out. Like just want to just want to check in on you, see how you're doing. That meant so much um, because it just it. truly felt like wow. I act, I have such a strong team and like just because I'm not planning the surgery and the surgery's over that like they still care about me and they care about my recovery and right. I just appreciated that so much from you 
Good. I I like what I do. It makes me feel good, and I could go home and rest assured that my patients are well taken care of. Mm-hmm. And I like that. When did you start working at La Jolla Cosmetic? So I, I came with Dr. Smoot in 2013. Um, 2013. So I've been, in September will be about 10 years that I've been with La Jolla Cosmetic. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Um, that was actually my next question is who else have you worked with at La Jolla Cosmetics? Um, so I have, prior to working with Dr. Smoot, I worked um, with Dr. Rami. And that's probably, again, about 25 years ago when he had his private practice. Mm. I worked with him. Um, and then when he closed his practice, he joined the Smoots. And then um, then when Dr. Smoot cro- closed his practice, then we joined La Jolla Cosmetic. So okay. I've gone back. Yeah. I've been in this field pretty long time. That's amazing. What made mm-hmm. you choose plastic surgery to, to go into? Because my sister's a nurse. She also works in plastic surgery. Mm-hmm. But there are so many different areas of nursing um, what made you choose plastic I actually surgery? didn't choose it. What happened was is uh, there was a new plastic surgeon coming on board, and this was in the 80s in uh, one of the medical um, facilities that I worked at. And everyone said, Carmen, you would be the perfect person to work with a plastic surgeon. Um, I never thought of it. And so I just kind of fell into that field, and I loved what I did. And I loved, you know, the patients um, that I dealt with. And uh, that's kind of how I fell into that field. One thing led to the other. Now I'm here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 40 years later. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's how you know that it's in alignment with what you want and what you want to be doing with your time because you've stuck with it for such a long time. And you're you're the best. You're the best nurse. I love you. Thank you. (laughs) And I love patients like you. They're so much fun. Yeah. Um. So have you had any surgery? Oh, secrets out. Yes. Oh, yes, 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 spill yes. the beans, spill so the tea. So in, um, this was again over 20 years ago when I did work with Dr. Brahma, he did a little lipo in my tummy. I have two children. So he did that. And just recently, about um, four years ago, Dr. Smoot um, did um, my face and neck. Ah, and, yeah. amazing. Yes. And, uh, you know, Dr. Salazar doesn't know this, but as soon as I lose a, a little more weight here, I'm going to get on the table and have him do something with my breast. Oh, <laughs> Make it a baby. little smaller and, per- smaller and perkier. <laughs> Let's go, girls. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you for being open and honest about that. Oh, of course. Have you, um, have you talked about that with your patients, like in consultations to try to like get them to feel a little of bit more comfortable? Of course. Of course. I said the best thing I always tell my patients and advice is just to be uh, confident and just to be positive about what you're going to be doing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very helpful because if you go into uh, this type of procedure in a negative attitude, it, it's really hard for recovery. So the best thing, I try to be positive and I, I encourage them to be positive. Mm-hmm. That actually leads into my next question perfectly. What kinds of mistakes do you see patients make in this process that we should watch out for? Um, the most common mistake is um, patients not choosing the correct um, surgeon Mm-hmm. and not knowing what questions to ask, you know, when they're interviewing a surgeon. Basically, it's what it is, an interview. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I feel that we like to do or I like to do is to educate our patients as to how, you know, what questions to ask, you know, the surgeons. Um, mm-hmm. And also to find a good, reputable facility, which is very important. Yeah, yeah. And from my personal experience coming in for my consultations, my my interviews with Mm -hmm. you and with Dr. Salazar, as you guys were so open to answering all of my questions, you wanted me to ask the questions. And I feel like that's such a huge differentiator in the quality of a surgeon team because there shouldn't be any kind of... um, hesitation to answer questions exactly. that a patient has. And so it just really set the tone and the environment um, 
that you guys are trustworthy and you are and your credentials are amazing and I got lucky with the best team. Oh, yes. The 18, no. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever told any of your patients to wait? Um, I can't tell the patient what to do. I can maybe mm -hmm. advise them or guide them. Um, you know, a lot of times um, the timing isn't right. You know, patients are, mm. have other medical or personal issues that um, can affect their healing. So, um, you know, basically guide them the right way. They, they do have to be in a good state of mind. And um, also medically, if they have other issues, if they have, you know, any concerns about some breast lump, you want to get those addressed first, mm -hmm. you know, before you go into an elective procedure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What questions do you want patients to ask when they come in to see you during their consultation? Um, well, I like patients that ask about the facility and the staff who's going to be taking care of them. You know, so I find... I, I like for them to to know um, the quality of care that they're getting, you know, mm -hmm. and that they're getting um, an anesthesiologist who's a physician who's going to be taking care of them, um, you know, again, at a reputable facility with uh, great trained, um, you know, nursing staff and, you know, mm -hmm. techs and, and myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. What advice would you give to young women who are thinking about plastic surgery? Do their research. Just do their research. Don't be scared to go to several surgeons and make sure you have the right questions, you know, to ask, um, you know, surgeon, look at the pictures. Make sure that you go to someone who is um, going to do something that's going to make sense to you. Mm-hmm. One of the best advice. Get mm -hmm. educated. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Well, educate yourself. Educate. Get educate. Yeah. Educate yourself. <laughs> um, so do you ever recognize any of your patients when you're like out and about around town? I don't. They recognize me. Yeah. And, it's, and, it, and <laughs> you're like, it's, no. it, it's awkward because I, I get a little embarrassed when I don't remember their name. But, you know, I just smile and continue on the conversation. And eventually they'll come out and they'll tell me something about them that will trigger a memory. But, you know, you got this little HIPAA. So you have to be very careful. For sure. So, yeah, yeah. But I do run into patients, ball games and all kinds of places. <laughs> mm hmm. That's that's so funny because the title of this podcast is Carmen is my nurse bestie. And now I'm like, everybody thinks you're their nurse bestie. No. Oh, I love it. <laughs> my nurse bestie. Uh -huh. it. Um, okay, so you've been volunteering in Mexico with Interface for 25 years. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, it's one of the most rewarding things I've done in my life. Um, I got involved, like I said, probably 25, 30 years ago. Uh, it's a medical team. It's made up of uh, plastic surgeons, anesthesiologists, dentists, nurses, volunteers, speech pathologists, a big group that go into uh, different areas of Mexico and work on kids with uh, congenital deformities, a lot of cleft lip, cleft palate. Um, and they have to have multiple procedures. So they have teams mm -hmm. and we go down there um, uh, maybe two to three times a year and work on these kids. And you see them when you go back again because they need another surgery. And it's it, it's life changing, you know, wow. to them. But I love, I love doing that. Yeah, it's amazing, amazing in a different situation, you know. And you have to be a little bit open because the whole environment, the surgery and the operating rooms are a lot different than here, but it's, it's just amazing. I love it. Yeah. Wow. That's a, so 25, 30 years, that's a long time. How, mm -hmm. how has that program like developed over the course of the time that you've been there? After about five years, actually, I, you know, with COVID and everything, it stopped. It just slowed down again. And there's been a lot of changes, I think, you know, financially with the programs, 
Um, but um, there's still a lot of people that go down there and work. Um, but every time you go down there, you meet a whole group of people and they're so grateful. They feed you. They're just amazing. They're, you know, um, they're so great. They don't mind waiting, you know, but we do sometimes 90, 90 to 100 cases in a weekend, surgical cases. Wow. But it's amazing. We work hard, but we just have an amazing time doing it. It's not like work. <laughs> yeah. Because everyone always does it with a smile. It's oh, great. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, that actually kind of leads into my next question. How many <laughs> surgeries do you think you've assisted in? Oh. Well, um, I, I, I did actually work in the operating room for about 15 years. So I did a lot of... Uh, oh, man, it's a lot of surgeries. It's too many to count. But I, I loved being in there and being part of the team. Like, are these okay? And um, do I need to, yeah, tighten this one up a little bit more, lower the folds a little bit, and just giving that that extra opinion. And, um, you know, it was just so, it was rewarding. I love being able to be there and do that. And then, you know, take care of the patients as well. And then they wake up and they see you, they go to sleep and they see you, that you're still there. And mm -hmm. a lot of patients have requested me to be there specifically on the surgery. So mm -hmm. I love doing that. So you don't work in the operating room anymore? No, now I am out um, and I'm Dr. Salazar's lead nurse. Okay. So I work with him and doing the other end of it, basically with recovery and patient teaching, patient educating, the preoperative visits. Um, so I get everybody prepared uh, for surgery. They tell them what to expect, um, you know, and what they need to do and what not not to do. And get them ready for surgery. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I I wasn't sure if you were going to be there on the morning of my surgery or not. So I was kind of sad that you weren't there. <laughs> I, but I got it through. I got through. It was you fun. got through it. I know we have an amazing staff, but I, 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 yeah, I've had patients request. I can only. I'm not only going to have surgery if Carmen's there, and so that you know that makes me feel good. And I've done we it. Need you to I've come in. <laughs> yeah, we need you to hold our hand. Yes, yes, and I love doing that. Um, what do we need to know about Dr. Salazar that only you know about him? Um, spill the tea. <laughs> uh, well, uh, deep down, I know that he cares a lot for his patients and I know that he can go home and he has surgery the next day. Well, he will go home and prepare and, you know, review, um, uh, what he's going to be doing. Um, and I know that the patients are always on his mind. And, um, what, another thing I love about Dr. Salazar is that I can always get a hold of him. If any patient has any hurt concerns, at all. Um, he's a phone call away. I can mm -hmm. always turn to him and, you know, make sure that this is the correct advice I've given to the patient and if he wants to add to that. So um, I know that he's his worst critic. So I know he's a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. I think we all know that. <laughs> yeah. But those are the little things that I could say. Uh, I'm not sure everybody knows, but yes. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you kind of have to be uh -huh. as a surgeon. Yes, they like are. You, and I think you, you want to that too. hundred <laughs> percent. Yes. You want yeah. that too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I love what you said too about him making himself so available for patients. Mm -hmm. Like Always. I have, yeah. And I have felt that so much. Yes, from him, but most definitely from you as well. Um, with, the, with just the way you've called to check up on me post-op and, um, you know, even when I'm in the office for my actual appointments, like you just cr have created such a, a beautiful environment and oh, such a safe space. That. And yeah, it's like every time I come in, it's like I'm with my family. Yes. And, you know, before COVID, it was hugging, you know, um, I love to hug my patients. I'm a hugger. And, and then when COVID came around, I, it was very hard for me to stay away from that. So mm -hmm. both for Salazar and I, because of our Latin culture, you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. um, but we, 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 you are like family and we'd love to treat you like family because we like, uh, we like what we do and we love mm -hmm. our patients. Yeah. 
Um, okay. Last question. Are you ready for it? I'm ready for it. Okay. What do you like to do around San Diego for fun? G- give us a scoop. Um, well, I love going to the ball game with my husband. We, mm. uh, you know, many years ago, I have a friend who was, um, who was scout uh, for Dominican players. And so he introduced me to a lot of these Dominican players that played for the Padres. So it was, um, fun going in, sitting with all the wives of the players and, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was fun. And, uh, you know, they'd come over to the house and everything. So, um, I, I love to support the Padres and, um, I think it, it's fun to get out there and, uh, to a good ball game you have, oh, you know, hundred percent. Yeah. So that's one of the fun things besides having fun with my grandkids. That's another fun thing, but ball game is great. Yeah. So mm-hmm. fun. And it's, it's spring training season right now, so baseball oh, yeah. coming in hot. Coming so in. excited. Like we got tickets to some games already. <laughs> oh, good. Good, good, good. Yes. As you should. Yes. Well, Carmen, thank you so much for literally just everything that Aww. you've done for me throughout my experience. And I'm sure every single one of your other patients will relate to this because you just show the most amazing care and attention to your patients. And I'm just Aww. so grateful. And I'm happy that we got to chat on this podcast today. So thank you so much. Oh, and thank you, Phoebe. I mean, like I said, I can have take care of so many patients. And I love when I get patients like you. They're just they, they just make my life uh, and my and the love for my for what I do. Um, just amazing. So makes me want to come to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there's going to be thousands more women who will appreciate everything that you're going to do for them. And I'm just so grateful that you got to be, that I got to be one of your patients and that you were on my surgery team. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Take a screenshot of this podcast episode with your phone and show it at your consultation or appointment or mention the promo code podcast to receive $25 off any service or product of $50 or more at La Jolla Cosmetic. La Jolla Cosmetic is located just off the I-5 San Diego freeway in the Zymed building on the Scripps Memorial Hospital campus. To learn more, go to ljcsc.com or follow the team on Instagram at ljcsc. The La Jolla Cosmetic Podcast is a production of The Axis, T-H-E-A-X-I-S dot I-O.